Imagine that you're an elite hacker, and not exactly the white hat type. Suppose your government has enlisted you to engage in some cyber espionage. You've worked around the clock to create sophisticated malware to spy on foreign governments and companies. Now, it's ready to be put to use. How will you distribute the malware? Attacking each organization individually is difficult and time-consuming, so you decide on a different approach. You'll disguise your malicious code as legitimate software from a trusted vendor, which will spread the malware to the vendor's entire customer base. This is known as a supply chain attack. You target a software company called Lunar Breeze because they have many high-profile customers that you would love to compromise. To disguise your malware as Lunar Breeze's product, you need it to be signed with their production code signing key. Like most companies, Lunar Breeze builds software in a CI-CD pipeline, which means that there are four possible attack vectors. The code signing keys, the build server, the source code repository, and an insider threat. What you don't know is that Lunar Breeze's new CISO, Lisa, has deployed several new security controls that are about to make your life difficult. First, you target the code signing keys. If you can compromise the keys, you can sign your malicious code at will and go relatively unnoticed. Unfortunately for you, Lisa has placed all of Lunar Breeze's keys in a hardware security module that's further protected by a secure signing server. Unable to get the keys, you turn your attention to the build servers. If you can't steal the keys, compromising the build server is the next best thing, as it would allow you to request that your malware be signed. But once again, Lisa is one step ahead. As part of the code signing process, she has configured the signing server to retrieve the code from the source code repository, perform a deterministic build, and independently verify that what is being requested to sign is a precise match of what's in the repository. This means that if you want to get your malware signed, you're going to have to commit it to the source code repository. That's more bad news for you, because your malware is only effective if it can remain undetected, and sad to say, committing it to the repository leaves a permanent record of your actions for anyone to see. But you're under a lot of pressure to compromise new targets, so you set your sights to attacking the source code repository. Yet another roadblock. Lisa has enforced strict security controls including multi-factor authentication and device authentication, on every commit. Additionally, every commit must be signed. Frustrated, but not deterred, you go back to the basics. Blackmail. You forge an incriminating picture of a software engineer at Lunar Breeze and try to coerce them into committing the malware for you. You think you've hit pay dirt, until the engineer informs you that every commit to the source code repository is code reviewed by at least one other engineer and the entire code base is scanned for malware and known vulnerabilities. So, even if the engineer commits the malware for you, it won't be long before it's detected. Finally, with all your options exhausted, you decide it's time to pick a different target that doesn't take security as seriously. Because of the security practices that Lisa implemented, you were unable to put in your malware into Lunar Breeze's product. So, how was Lisa able to stay ahead of the game? she enlisted help from her trusted partner, Guarantier. By using Garrison, Guarantier's flagship product, she was able to improve Lunar Breeze's security posture and protect many aspects of the enterprise, including its code signing system and source code repository access. With Garrison, privileged resources and sensitive data are also highly secured, shielding Lunar Breeze from ransomware attacks. Want to be more like Lisa? Visit www.guarantier.io to learn how.